Shut your fucking mouth, you fucking piece of shit. Try me, you wankers. Fucking try me. If I could name only one thing that bothers me more than anything else in the world, it would have to be sexism. I truly believe that all human beings should be provided equal rights and equal protections under the law, regardless of sex or sexual preference. Recently, Angry Aussie uploaded a video showing his disgust for female circumcision. Any sort of practice around female genital mutilation of young girls, it's child abuse. I thought this was particularly interesting because he uploaded a video several months back where he had a woman speaking poorly of men who had not been circumcised. And if your partner has only previously been used to unhygienic, uncircumcised men, it will be hard for her to get used to a cock with, for her, normal odours and flavours. In the meantime, grate some parmesan and cheese and wrap some free-range deli ham around your dick. I added a comment explaining that the foreskin of the male penis is in fact the most sensitive part and was demonstrated in a study published in the British Journal of Urology in 2007 called Fine Touch Pressure Thresholds in the Adult Penis. He removed my comment and blocked me. Any fucking wanker who wants to jump in and go, Oh, male circumcision is just as bad. Shut your fucking mouth, you fucking piece of shit. Anyone who tries to hijack comment threads with that shit, block, delete in a fucking heartbeat. Try me, you wankers. Fucking try me. Angry Aussie has every right to say whatever he wants and to block and remove comments if he wants to. But I also have the right to make a video reply, whether he chooses to accept it or not. And when I see this kind of extreme sexism, I cannot stand by and let it go unchallenged. If Angry Aussie knew he was right in his position, he wouldn't have resorted to removing comments and blocking people. Block, delete, in a fucking heartbeat! Try me, you wankers! Fucking try me! So let's get right down to the issue. Why do some people assume female circumcision is evil and male circumcision is good? I'm going to go through a list of the most common arguments and refute them. But let me start with what the actual reason is, and we can play semantics later. At the heart of it, it's simply pure sexism, with an appeal to tradition and an appeal to popularity to back up this sexist stance. Sexists often think of men as tough and not in need of protection, and women as delicate and in need of special protection. So let's go over the most common arguments. When men are circumcised, they aren't losing anything important. This could not be more incorrect. The foreskin of the penis has the most densely packed concentration of nerve endings on the entire penis. Virtually all of the fine touch nerve receptors are located on the foreskin. And so without it, the man can no longer sense fine touch genitally. That's an entire sensation removed for life. That would be like removing your ability to taste sweet or your ability to see blue. It can also be compared to the way female circumcision can remove an entire sensation, only allowing the woman to get sexual pleasure through vaginal penetration. If a man has been circumcised, he cannot experience the sensation of foreskin stimulation, just as a type 1 clitorectomized woman cannot sense clitoral stimulation. Both now require penetration or other means of strong pressure sensation. But when a woman is circumcised, she can no longer enjoy sex. This is simply not true. You will not hear this from circumcised women in Africa and in the Middle East. You will only hear this repeated in Western culture. It's incorrect. A female circumcision can reduce pleasure, like male circumcision. And it can remove important sensations, like male circumcision. But it does not completely remove the ability to enjoy sex in most cases, just like male circumcision. But female circumcision is designed to reduce pleasure, and male circumcision isn't. This claim always amuses me, because it speaks to the lack of historical understanding. Male circumcision was first medicalized and popularized in Western culture as a means to stop masturbation because they knew it reduced pleasure. Even as late as 1969, male circumcision was still promoted in the medical community as a cure for masturbation. As soon as it was better understood that masturbation was not harmful, that argument disappeared. But the practice, which started to try and curb masturbation, didn't go away. In the 11th century, 
the very famous Jewish rabbi and philosopher Moses Maimonides wrote, The reason for circumcision is to bring about a decrease in sexual intercourse and a weakening of the organ in question, so that this activity be diminished and the organ be in as quiet a state as possible. The bodily pain caused to that member is the real purpose of circumcision. Violent concupiscence and lust that goes beyond what is needed are diminished. The fact that circumcision weakens the faculty of sexual excitement and diminishes the pleasure is indubitable. But with female circumcision, they sew the vagina shut. That's called infibulation, and it's one of the least common forms of female circumcision. Just because it's rare doesn't make it right. But don't make the mistake in assuming that female circumcision requires infibulation. But male circumcision has health benefits. Female circumcision doesn't have health benefits. The male and female structures both develop in utero from the same parts. It shouldn't be of any surprise that what might affect one gender might likely affect the other in the same or at least in a very similar way. For example... In two studies, female circumcision showed a decrease in HIV transmission. If it's true that male circumcision can reduce HIV transmission by removing many of the Langerhans cells, it shouldn't be of any surprise that removing the inner labia, outer labia, and clitoral hood might have the same result, as these areas of the female genitals are densely laden with Langerhans cells as well. Or we could just use a condom. I find it interesting that the parts of the genitals that feel the best also seem to be the most susceptible to HIV infection, at least according to some studies. So how much pleasure is it okay to remove to reduce HIV infection? The answer is none. Unless we're talking about adults giving informed consent to remove parts of their own genitals, children don't have the voice to make that kind of decision. But if boys aren't circumcised, they'll get stuff under there. You would think this argument would only be made by male virgins who've never seen a vagina in real life before. The female vagina has many more folds of skin and produces much more moisture. If the folds of the vagina are not washed regularly, a fluid called sepum can collect with the shedding of dead skin cells. This produces a cheesy substance with a fishy smell. Should we hack off the outer labia, inner labia, and clitoral hood to keep these areas dried out so this doesn't happen as easily? Or should her parents instruct her to clean that area while bathing? It's much harder to clean a vagina than it is to clean an intact penis with a foreskin. But the penis looks better when it's circumcised. That's a matter of opinion, and it's almost exclusively held by those who live in circumcised cultures. Many female porn stars get labiaplasty, and some even get their clitoral hood removed. This is their right as adults. But it would be illegal to perform a labiaplasty or a hoodectomy on a newborn baby girl. That kind of cosmetic surgery has to be left to the owner of those parts. These are not birth defects that require intervention. Every girl is born with a labia and a clitoris. Additionally, every boy is born with a foreskin. Any fucking wanker who wants to jump in and go, Oh, male circumcision is just as bad. Shut your fucking mouth, you fucking piece of shit. Anyone who tries to hijack comment threads with that shit, block, delete in a fucking heartbeat. Try me, you wankers. Fucking try me. I would suggest that you stop making assumptions and do your research before stating opinions, especially while screaming them at the top of your lungs in a sexist fit of rage. Thank you for your time.